Hello kiddos, how are y'all doing today? This is Opo with another part of the story of Noah. You remember maybe that last time Noah got out of the ark? Remember he sent out two birds and finally the one bird he sent out, the dove, and it never came back because it found a home somewhere in some tree, I guess. And so that's when Noah took off the cover to the ark and looked out and the ground was dry and he and his family all got out of the ark and were on the freshly dry ground. Must have been very interesting to see that after the flood, after it had been covered with water. Must have been very different than before. And of course, he had never been where he was either because the boat, the ark landed in the mountains so we won't know how that is until one day when we're in heaven and we can ask Noah or the Lord will show us that that story in 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 pictures and video form whatever it is that we have there okay okay so let's keep on reading we're in chapter 8 of Genesis and the Bible says in verse 20 then Noah <clears throat> excuse me built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal and of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. So <clears throat> Noah made an altar, probably with stones. An altar was like a box made out of rocks and maybe about the size of one of your big trash cans, you know. And then he had to uh, offer an offering to the Lord of one of some of the animals that were that he had taken in there. And so he had to kill some of the animals because that is the only way that God could overlook all of the sin that was in the world, even though he had, even though he had just, you know, wiped out all of life on the earth, but still, even Noah's heart and his family's heart, there was sin that was in every person. And so from that time on, they had to build an altar um, to ask God for forgiveness and for his, uh, for his blessing. And so Noah went ahead and did that. We don't know exactly how he did it, but he did it. He obeyed. <clears throat> then verse 21 says, And the Lord smelled a smooth, a soothing aroma. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's God explaining to us that when that smoke from the altar went up, it was like something that smelled good to God because it showed a heart that wanted to obey. Every time we obey, it is like <clears throat> doing an offering and that offering smells good for, to God. That's just the way he explains it, okay? Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake. Although the imagination of the, uh, let me see, imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth, nor will I again destroy every living thing as I have done. So God made a promise. Now, he didn't give all the details of the promise. He will later. But he promised that he would never again destroy the whole world at once, all of the people on earth like he did, and all of the animals too. He said, I will never do that again. This is the only time I will do that. Okay. And then verse 22, this is what he, this is what God says. While the earth remains, and so he's saying from now on, from this day on, there will be seed time and harvest. That means that there will be planting of seeds and harvesting the seeds in the ground. There will be cold and heat. And then he says winter and summer. So these are the kind of things we live with. There will be heat and cold. There will be winter and summer. That is the different seasons of the year. There will be day and night. And these shall not cease, he said. So there will be always a cycle of day and night and day and night. And that is what has happened. God promised it. And we have gone on for six or 7,000 years and there has always been a day and a night and a day and a night all of our lives, all through the lives of all people. And God said nobody would be able to change that because he had he promised to keep that that way. 
So let's thank God for this day and for the night of rest that we had because he's the one that established that. Okay? Goodbye. Love you.